Hi guys, as promised, this is my 10 inch Windows 8.1 BIOS guide. I told you already I will do it. And this is the first time I'm in front of a camera, so I think if the people who didn't see me before on the Droid Effect Hangout, I think it's pretty obvious I'm not Arnold Schwarzenegger. But enough of that, let's continue with the BIOS guide. The first thing I want to talk about is all the tablets in general, their build quality, their display quality, the sound. And then I want to talk about which one could be the right platform for you. If it's either the Intel Bay Trail or the i5 version. The i3 versions wouldn't be something I would recommend because the, the price you are paying for it is just too high in terms of what you are getting if i5 or Intel Bay Trail. And then I will talk about which of the tablets I reviewed would be the right one for each platform. So let's continue with that. The three main devices I will be talking about will be the HP Omni 10, the Dell Venue 11 Pro and the Microsoft Surface Pro 2. But I will also take the Dell Venue 11 Pro with the i5 into consideration. I didn't test that one yet because it's still not out. But from what I've heard it's about 10 or 20% less in performance compared to the Microsoft Surface Pro 2. Maybe that's too simple minded but let's just keep it like that so we can still compare them side by side. So let's compare the displays of the three tablets. My first choice without even blinking twice would be the Dell Venue 11 Pro. It has by far the best sharpness, the best color accuracy, the best blacks if not by a lot, the best whites and what is important for me the best viewing angles. You don't lose almost anything when you are tilting it. And for me that's by way the best 1080p screen in the 10 inch range I have seen so far. The second place would be the Microsoft Surface Pro 2, but far off. It is a bit grainy in terms of the sharpness. The blacks are still very great, nothing to complain here. The whites are good, but my problem here was the, the tilting, the viewing angles. They were just subpar because they lost a lot of brightness when you are tilting it. And I didn't really like that because you had to use more brightness because of that. Yes, it can get very bright, but of course this also sucks more battery. You have to take that into consideration. The third place for me would be the HP Omni 10, but pretty close to the Surface Pro 2. And if you are even used to those anti-glare protected screens, I would even put it on place 2. Because of the 16 by 10 aspect ratio I prefer because it feels it, it's the smarter choice for me on a Windows 8.1 tablet. So it has also great colors, it's sharp about the same if not even slightly sharper because like I said the Surface Pro 2 seemed slightly grainy. But everything else on the HP Omni 10 is good as well. And if you are used to the anti-glare or even prefer it, then I would put it on place 2. But for me it's place 3 because of the coding. I didn't like it because it didn't really do any anti-glare but it diminished the quality of the screen because you had these weird reflections of it and it just didn't look right. So like I said, the Dell by far, then the Surface Pro 2 and maybe a close match with the HP Omni 10 in terms of the display. We finished the display section, let's talk about the sound. And again, the Dell Venue 11 Pro, by far the best. It had, by a big gap, the loudest volume. It had about 30% more reserves compared to the others. My second place would be the HP Omni 10, which had a very nice placement because it had it on the bottom, the speakers. And it always reflected nicely, it was good. The volume could have been higher and the sound could have been richer, but overall I think it's the thing you most get on all other tablets, so it's okay. As for the Surface Pro 2, I was pretty disappointed. I don't know why. The sound sounded very distant, very shallow, not rich at all. And the volume was my biggest problem because I had always wanted to crank it up higher just to see I'm already at 100%. And that's my biggest complaint. I couldn't really enjoy YouTube videos at that, and not even those. But on the Dell Venue, reserves a lot so much more and this takes up for it. The sound of course can be better but at least it's the best sounding tablet I've heard so far. Definitely Dell, the HP Omni 10 and then the Surface Pro 2. As for the build quality of the free devices, if you're only looking for the best feel in the hands and the most compact design, my first place goes to the HP Omni 10. It has the lightest chassis, it is the best because it had these nice rounded edges and it felt just comfortably in the hand. I really liked it and the best thing here because of the lightweight. You can hold it for longer periods of time in one hand 
which wasn't possible with the others two. With the others two, with the other two, you always had the the need. I always felt the need to lean it against something or like this. But really using it in the hands solely wasn't really enjoyable. On the Surface Pro 2 it was even worse because it is so heavy, it's a tank. And what I didn't like it, I always had to use the stand. Using it in the hands with 900 grams, it is just too cumbersome. It wasn't really an enjoyable experience. So here first place for me HP Omni 10 it is compact it felt very solid but still lightweight enough to hold it in the hands then yeah I think the Dell because overall it's still lightweight it has nice rounded edges I showed it on my video it had the loose battery but that's no deal breaker for me I wouldn't really notice this at all but still it's there and it had this it had this weird rough finish on the back which I didn't really like but also no deal breaker and overall it's still it, you could hold it in the hands for a longer period of time halfway decent but at least it was possible on the Surface Pro 2 sorry you can't you have to use the stand and one other thing it is pretty bulky it is pretty heavy it's pretty thick so holding it in the hands forget that you will have to use the stand and one thing about the build quality here it's pretty edgy and I didn't really like that but that's not the problem. The problem is the coding I didn't really like. I think the finish of the device can be scratched up far too easy. Uh, way too easy. Because I slid it only on a wooden table just a few centimeters and it already got a scratch. And I'm not really confident how it will hold up with a longer period of time. So for me the winner HP Omni 10 because it felt really great in the hand. The Dell by a smaller margin. And then the Surface Pro 2 just because of the heavy weight and the bulkiness. Okay, so now it's time for me to give you all the information for you to decide which platform do you want to choose. Do you want to go for the Intel Bay Trail or do you want to go for the i5 versions? So what are the differences? If you want a lightweight tablet, if you want more casual use, content consuming and only office work and want a noiseless and pretty nice device for in terms of heat because they don't heat up at all then I would go for the Intel Bay Trail but if you're looking for more multitasking capabilities more heavy tasks like video rendering photo editing and such stuff and like I said if you want to do more workstation stuff desktop office stuff then it maybe would be better to go for the i5 versions because those have four or eight gigabytes of RAM and you won't get into the bottleneck so fast. But like I said, for me personally, the Intel Bay Trail is enough. For me, it could even replace a laptop because I can do all my office stuff, but I can enjoy media. I can watch YouTube videos. I can read a lot of PDF files. I can browse the web about the same quality of experience, enjoyable compared to the i5 versions. Because even on an i5 version of the Surface Pro 2, I couldn't use Firefox. It wasn't just smooth. Chrome worked somehow, but if you're using all three with a mouse, then you can you can easily use even Chrome. Firefox, forget that. Firefox just doesn't work on those tablets. It's way too power hungry. But like I said, for me the Beta does everything. It is slow, of course, but for general use, like browsing and the modern UI apps, office documents, you won't really notice any difference but therefore you get the lighter device you get a better battery life and in terms of the Dell you even get a better display and the sound so the Intel Bay Trail goes more to casual users with office work and the i5 go definitely more for people who are looking for a desktop replacement or a laptop replacement because you can do it's practically a tablet form factor but an ultrabook so if you decided that now let's Check which device in which category could be the right one for you. Let's start with the i5 versions. In the i5 sector you have the Surface Pro 2 and you have the Dell Venue 11 Pro with the i5. Both have 4 and 8 GB versions. Both have USB 3. Both have a capacitive stylus. So they are pretty much on par with the specs. And if I would have to choose a i5 tablet, it would be the Dell Venue. Why? Mostly because of the fantastic screen and the way better sound. And the rest is about the same. Like I said, the Dell uses the Y CPU of the i5. 
and the Surface Pro 2 uses the U version. So like I said, there would be a difference in performance about 10 or 20 percent, but as I'm pretty happy with the performance of Ethan Bay Trail already, I don't think these 10 or 20 percent will really make that much of a difference or be any, any deciding factor. If you are using a lot of video editing and really need it on an Ultrabook, then you could get, maybe go for the Surface Pro 2. But in general, the difference is just too small to make up for the less good screen and the sound. The Dell has the better screen, the better sound, I think even a better battery, maybe not the build quality because I heard some not so good things about the i5 quality of this tablet. But in overall, I would go for that because it's also lighter and it's cheaper. So this is one thing you have to keep in mind. Now let's talk about the Intel Batrail versions. Here it's much more closer I would say, because if you are looking for a device that it's pretty cheap but does all the stuff very well and you can maybe upgrade it in a year without even losing too, the, uh, too much money, then I would go for the HP Omni 10 because it offers a really great value for 350 or 400 dollars. You get a great screen, a good sound and you get all the things done as on a Dell Venue. On the Dell Venue though, you get a USB 3.0 port, you get a better port placement because if you're using it in desktop mode, you have the ports on the sides and not like on the HP Omni 10 at the bottom. And this was some kind of problem because you had to look how you could set it up without blocking the ports on the bottom. This was a bit of a problem and you can't just turn it around because then the screen just wouldn't turn on with the HMI. Maybe you can turn, you can rotate it afterwards, but I didn't test that one. But as I said, overall, if you are looking for the best Intel Batrail device right now, I would go for the Dell. Yes, it is a bit more expensive, about let's say 100 or 150 dollars. But for me personally, it would be worth it if I am planning to use it for a longer period of time. I don't want to replace it in a half year or, or maybe in a year because the better display, the better sound, the overall better, f the, it's just more capable, I think, in overall because of that, it's enjoyable. The HP Omni 10 doesn't do anything wrong. If you want a cheap, great experience, it's definitely the one to go for. You don't waste much money on it. You can't do much wrong with the HP Omni 10 because it's a really great media consumption device and still can do all the office work as well. And if you're mostly using it on a couch, I would maybe even prefer that one if display and sound isn't that important for you. So the HP Omni 10, if you're looking for a cheap, great device and the Dell if you're looking for the best at the moment that is available. Now I want to get to the end of the BIOS guide and want to talk quickly about the future because there is nothing to expect here for the next couple of months. I don't think any successor will be come until late fall. So if you want to buy right now, Intel Bay Trail would be the Dell if you want it cheap, the HP Omni. And if you go for the i5, I would also go for Dell and the Surface free won't come that far so that's for me just too overpriced for everything it offers the dell offers much better value and the hp omni 10 the even better one if you don't have all the things to be the best so i hope this helped you to decide which to buy if you liked my bias guide please give me a thumbs up subscribe to my channel and reshare this video and since this is the first time i'm in front of the camera let me know if you want to see me more in front of the camera on, or don't at all. It's up to you. I always like some constructive feedback. Always know to appreciate it. Okay, so far. Bye.